you guys had just encountered this warehouse. This warehouse that was labelled with a snake painted on the outside of the building. One of you, I believe it was Adrian, decided to set some kind of magical effect over the front door of this place. This large, huge, um, 15 foot long door, including its little doorway beside that. As he left some kind of spell on it. Having a look at his character sheet, with the spell he has opened, he's done prestigitation. He has message acid. He has nothing that would really leave a mark. Do any of you have anything that would possibly leave <clears throat> a mark of some kind? I think I th what he was going with was uh, prestigitation. Oh, right. Um, he wanted to start gang war. That's right. And he was prestigitating. Yeah, he left them. yeah. Yeah. So awesome. So after having done that, you guys decided not to proceed deeper in, but instead decided to try and tie your luck around the side here. Now, uh, Mr. Joker, uh, as you went around this side, you're looking at the two-story warehouse, and you're currently looking up above you, where there seems to be this doorway that's hanging out over the street, where there is no walkway up to it. It is just a door that, if anybody went out, would otherwise just open up and flop down, just simply. But you can also see that there are two windows that are lining the sides of this wall where you are. Again, two stories down. How do you wish to proceed? We aren't on the map. Okay, that's very much We're... why. Okay. Oop, what there we go. Mean? There we go. Yes. Alright. Okay. Well, being a rogue, I probably would like to try unconventional ways. Probably that second story door right there. Very good. But very good. Please Should continue. I, uh... Yeah, please continue. But, but I like to uh, check if it wasn't some sort of like a trap or maybe like a door leading to a wall or something. Uh, all very good things to potentially look for, certainly. Uh, tell me how you go about doing that. Hmm, I suppose at first I'm going to take a glance before climbing up and take a closer look. You climb up and take a glance before you take open it. Okay, very good. Uh, so you attempt to climb, and uh, this is being a warehouse, so with that in mind, you're trying to climb uh, hard, like, uh, wooden panels that are raised uh, vertically, not providing many comfortable footholds for you. Are you a tabaxi? Yes, I am a tabaxi. Do tabaxis come with a climb speed? Uh, let's see. That's a good question. We have feline agilities, but it doesn't uh, consider. Does it consider us a crime speed? A crime spree. Interest. Oh, climb speed. <laughs> okay, very good. Um, it will be right there in all the other f traits and features of yours. Cat's claws. No, you have a climbing speed. That's exactly what I was looking for. Exactly written there. Because of your claws, you have a climbing speed. Exactly there. Which is what I wanted. And, uh, yes, no check will be needed. You climb the side of this building. No problem whatsoever. And you see this door right before you. Perfectly dour and grey and tarnished wood, essentially, having been exposed to the elements. Okay, I'm going to, uh, with my cat eyes, what do I see? Uh, you see a door. Now with that perception yeah. check, you continue to see a door. Yep, it's a door. Uh, does it, is it lock or unlock? There's only one magical way of discerning that, my dear friend, and that is to try and open it for yourself. For all doors appear locked until you take the leaf of faith to go for the door handle and to open it. Okay. I am going to climb up a bit upside down. No, I'll climb it to the side. Grab the door handle and attempt to open it. So if something bursts forward in front, I'm not going to get a direct hit. Certainly, yes. You take a nice concealed position 
And uh, as you do so, you can see that there is a lone rat who uh, currently like kind of scurries to the corner of this room. And he kind of just like chills out there, kind of just like face in the corner, butt aimed towards you. As he just sort of uh, tries his best to not in, like get involved with you. He just like, he just get, scampers away. I'm going to roll my wisdom save to not go after that rat. Yes. <laughs> All right. You oh, fail. No. You want to pursue the rat and to chomp down on it immediately. Yes, I just like. <laughs> Wonderful. You rush right in. As you do so, there is a little bell that is above these doorways. This one oh. was on the inside. As you climbed and rushed over it, your ears flicked it ever so gently, just enough for you to hear, and you're unclear if it, it nicked and was heard by anybody else. As you look to the other doorways, you can see that each one of these does have a silver-like bell to it, all with strings that are attached, but none of them are set off when they open the door. Your little bell that you flicked with your ears did not go off because you opened the door, but went off just because you happened to accidentally graze it in your pursuit. So they aren't traps over these doors. They aren't the traps of these doors. But those thoughts quickly melt away as you go for that rat and you try to nom him. And you are not a token. Why are you not a token? I'm going to fix the fact you are not a token. There we go. Okay, so if you want to go for that rat, give me a roll. Give me an attack roll. With your claws. Okay. Yep. Uh, I assume I can do two hand attack. I mean, like two weapon attack with the claw. Yeah. Okay. The first one. Uh, let me put two damage. One with the stone and one without the without the strength. Okay. Okay. Main claw. That's a hit, and that rat is dead. You you chew on him and you you fresh and you go, and he's dead. He just like his organs crush underneath your terrible mighty jaw. This is the best food I have eaten since that trash two months ago. <laughs> well, okay, Didn't well. Did you just then. eat at the tavern last night? Well, mm. eaten, not not drunk. I I was not you. I I was having a rough time with my life. Please bear with me. <laughs> uh, and so, uh, I'm going to see if I can at least uh, disable all these bell things. Uh, you may more than like be willing to uh, snip the little cord that connects to each of these bells. That won't be too difficult for you at all. Mm -hmm. I will do just that. Yeah, perfect. Uh, with the draw, draw tool, uh, feel free to draw a little X wherever you've, uh, you know, cut a bit of the rope off. And you can do this silently. You can do this silently so that uh, it doesn't uh, activate or ring the bell out more. So you just snip the cords to each of these. No problem whatsoever. Okay. I'm turned to a buggy and like, I think the cord is here. I think I hit some of the bell, but... Mm, I think it's still safe to go here. Hmm. All right. Let's I might it. be tiny little bit hitting on the bell, but I'm as a quiet cat, and they can't, they can't prove me. They, as far as uh, I see, it's just uh, me catching a mouse. <laughs> All right. But uh. And besides, if there's something happen, I can try to uh. Neo, maybe they would thought I was a cat. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, uh, it's already happened, so it should just be more careful, I guess. But should we go in? You so... would need a crime check, but if you're willing to go in from there. Uh, I can help uh, Nath Melina get up yeah. and and get up myself, hopefully. <laughs> So, Melina is, uh, yeah, she'll head over there, um, just trying to think, though, she's at, at this point, she's like, I know this is 
I know that there is uh, a chance that what we seek, this uh, man we seek, might, might be in here. Or should we but split we, up? We, no, we shouldn't split up, but we just, we better hope that we do not, um, the, any, we better hope that no uh, city watch catches wind of this. In and, in and out, quickest as quick as fox. Hmm. Miss Pallad in a fade of the city watch. Interesting already, off the beat. All that right, it's good. more a case of. Oh, okay. Never mind, that was an out of character so... thing you did. So. <laughs> an out of character thing you did. Okay. Yeah. So, no. you want to stay outside and keep watch? No, so she says, um. She says, by all means, let's head in. I'm just saying, if. If, uh. If the city, city watch, watch came by, it would be rather bad. Yeah, totally. Yes. You yeah. would definitely be in a suspicious scene, at a suspicious area, in a suspicious time. After you'd already been warned by woman, somebody else that you weren't meant to be, you know, sneaking around all these areas, but hey, you know. Yeah. Uh, too late, uh, and I, I guess it's too late now, and I just uh, do a horseshoe so you can better climb up. You do a uh, horseshoe so that you can climb up? What's that? Like, you put your hands together and <clears throat> uh, go a little down, and the other person step on it, and you push them up. Oh, excellent. So, yeah. Bruggy, you assume the position. Uh, Melina, you're all primed and set to just get up there. Yeah, so I, I can't control uh, Adrian's token, but okay. uh, Melina will actually tell him to um, uh, to wait nearby and use message to notify us if there is anyone. Controlled by Melina. Done. So yeah, Adrian's going to be keeping watch so he can send message. Right, okay, right, right. that's all very well and good then. Totally. Uh, uh, very good. Adrian remains on standby, waiting to make sure nobody catches you by surprise. Melina, you're boosted up by Broggy. No problem whatsoever. Braggy, rather. Okay. And then, uh, Braggy, uh, it's your turn to get up. Yeah, how do I do that? Acrobatics? Or... Uh, no, the I mean... walls are much too sheer for you to be able to either force your way up or to dex your way up. Uh, you will certainly need another solution. Though it is Melina on the second will... story, yes, Melina can reach down and offer you a hand if they want. Right? You do that? Yep. Alright. Do I just get up or do I need to uh, save? Uh, you will not need to make a save, but Melina will have to give me an athletics check as she has to check. lift your bulk and to support it. Oh, shit. Athletic. Oh, I mean, that's fine. Mm-hmm. Yes, ah. you boss that. Nice. Pretty nice. Pretty strong. Very strong indeed. Uh, so, where do you guys head to next? I also, first thing first, going right. is going to go a little bit quieter. Okay. Okay, very good, very good. Uh, you are stel stealthified, certainly. So as quiet as a herd of elephant or a cat stalking its prey. Either one will tell. Only time will tell. Fantastic and excellent. You are stealthified behind an enclosed door. Melina will have to let you guys do the stealth. It's hard to stealth when, whenever she walks, you hear a click. Like, click, clang. <laughs> That's exactly right, yes. Alright. You ready? Yeah. Joker says to the DM he opens the door. The DM mm. understands and obliges. And then opens to reveal up that this upper level of this warehouse is lined with various bits and boxes of several different varieties and kinds. Um... From what you entered into was some kind of disused, dusty, empty shelved office. Still furnished, but lacking all amenities. <sighs> mm. 
lacking all amenities. And then in this upper area of this balcony, there is uh, several arrays of stacks that are all furnished with a variety of um, mothballs and crates, uh, moth-eaten cloves, bottles of uh, spoiled olive oil, and uh, there seems to be hundreds and hundreds of wooden sandals all through here. There's a pile rising almost to the ceiling of nothing but sandals all the way up. It's quite insane. And uh, there's also this uh, little crane, this little jimmy, that's just to the center right of uh, this whole array. Uh, the floor that you can see beneath you uh, is exposed to the ground bef below, which uh, appears right over here. Do, 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 do. There we go. So you can certainly see uh, all of this floor. Then you have a little bit of a stairway. Boom. There you go. I suggest we check that door first in case yeah, something exactly. might come to jump on us. Yeah, certainly. So by all means, with your stealthiness, you creak the door open to reveal another office. Um, a similarly disused, this one with a window, and uh, two other rats who were, <sighs> you no doubt likely more with uh, very little difficulty as they uh, all scurry and scamper as you sneakily stalk them and then strike and just kill them. I'm gonna name you Supper Snap. Very nice. You uh, you maul the two rats, adding them to your collection. As you have, you are you are the killer of three rats already this evening. Terrifying work. Yeah. If the if there is a guild that center on killing rats, I will be on it. Be careful of trap, though. Oh yes. Uh, and uh, uh, speaking of that, not hidden discreetly at all, uh, there are two more silver bells that are lining the tops of these doors. I'm gonna cut it with my claw. Very good, very good. You cut both of them with your claws, certainly. And naturally, your curiosity leads you to inspect both of these rooms, whereupon you find just more disused, dusty, codweb ridden rooms, each with a rat in there to add to your growing collection of rat corpses until you're nice and full, gluttonously having eaten five living rats. And also, I have now had uh, what is it? I used five rat paw to make out a rat paw necklace. Uh. <laughs> oh, excellent! You you can you can get started on that in your downtime, I promise. But in the meantime, with your collection of rat bones and uh, everybody just sort of watching you maul and eat these rats, um, you have the rest of the warehouse open and available to you. But more, more disturbingly, when you get to this side of the railings, you can see to the bottom of the ground floor that along this, along the walls, there are several corpses, several of them, all of which have black coats on. In fact, you can see that there are five individuals, followed by another seven, to make uh, twelve in total all lining the wall, bloodied and slumped over, and very, very fresh from their decay. Very, very freshly killed. Yeek. We should be careful. Yeah. Joker, go scout the area. Right. Should we roll stealth again? Uh, no, we will keep your current stealth score. Okay, I'm gonna tiptoe slowly right there and take a peek from that behind the box. Uh, you take a peek from behind the box and the scene is as you had a scene before, essentially. Um, yeah, the scene is exactly as you saw before, more or less. Tables and chairs have been carelessly tossed across the floor. The corpses of a dozen men lie along the walls, their rapiers and daggers lying nearby. 
and on the north side of the area, stairs rise to an open level above, which you guys are currently standing on. Okay. I would like... I'm going to roll medicine. I want to see what is the cause of death. Uh, that is going to be unclear because you are far away from them. You know, you're not okay. getting up close. I'm going to go, is... bit... go a little bit closer. I'm going to stand behind this crane. Uh, it Whoa. will be the same situation anywhere you go along this balcony. You see the line of corpses all draped in their own black leathery cloaks and outfits, making all stab wounds and cuts uh, difficult to fully reconstruct and deconstruct from what you can tell. Where were the corpses? Mm. Are they here or so, are they They are on here? the ground floor lining the, uh, yeah. lining the face. So I guess I can just so, draw a squiggle. Yeah, so Melina is kind of trying to get um uh Joker's attention, like well, any news what's like she's she's basically trying to whisper that at him, even though he probably can't hear at the distance, but Yeah, I yeah, think I... It, I think we scout that's enough. I yeah. Slowly walk out. You do so, the place does not erupt suddenly in violent, sudden thrashing. It's uh, it's all very quiet in here, for sure. Great. Too quiet. Indeed. <laughs> Your heavy footfalls creak on the balcony woodwork as you gently move your hulking frames across. Right. I'm going for the shoes. There are endless amounts of wooden sandals of all sizes through all which... Uh, yes, absolutely. Through which you can certainly take your pick. Uh, have you lived in Waterdeep your whole life, Braggy? No. Nope. Ah, he came enough. here a few months ago. Yeah, no, that's fine then. Uh, so you have not seen uh, sandals of these kind before. And they seem like they are perfectly gone to waste. No, they most definitely could have afforded a bit more love, most definitely. I searched for someone my size. Oh, yeah, they will have them of all sizes, and through enough searching, you will find one your own size, certainly. Well, a pair. I'm not... Just hope it's my color. Uh, what color do you want? Blue. They've got it. <laughs> Sweet. Uh, put them uh, back. Joker, just look from afar. Do they have the one with purple? Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, 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 ooh. They've got and some purple got... Uh, cloggy sandals. And he he he's going to tiptoes over there to say, "Excuse me, Marita, I want that. This is my favorite colors. I want so, it. I think this... it." I mean... Melina's like, Melina's like, I I can understand. I can understand the love for you know picking out a new pair of shoes, but I think we've got more pressing matters. Well, we all are broken. Let's just turn this in, in breaking to a birthday. You, you don't understand I, how long I have been walking on the street without shoes. <laughs> this, this thing is going to save my feet. So while they're while they're doing their shoe shopping. Yeah, exactly. Melina is going to use her horrible, horrible investigation <laughs> to try and see if she can at least figure out how long ago this happened. Uh, Melina oh. can absolutely go about doing that. Do you have perception? Do you have the proficiency in investigation? Nope. <laughs> then I will not allow it, but do you have medicine I mean, at all? I mean, it... No, it's like it, all she's really doing is seeing how dry the blood is. That's not exactly a... Uh... Essentially, how I work is, if you have proficiency with a skill, you can tell me what situations you want to use your skills for. If you do not have that kind of skill, then you will have to wait for my say-so to have that check. But I don't mind telling you that in your experience of battle, and in your experience of death, and uh, you're, you're fairly wise, aren't you? Fairly wise, Melina? No, no, not not quite so wise. Okay, now now without any yeah, lacking the investigation or the medicine 
skill and not being that naturally wise, <laughs> I would tell you that the combination says that uh, no, these bodies were killed, or rather they were laid low, maybe no more than five days ago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They all have their rapiers and their sword, uh, daggers and whatnot uh, laid to them. And naturally, in order to do this, you uh, you take a closer look. And uh, what does interest you, Melina, what does interest you, which requires no investigation check, is uh, as you're peering through them, you can see that several, the five, five of the black cloak ones do have these... Uh, Tattoos of a serpent chasing down a sphere. Uh, and then you notice that seven of the others, at least like one of the seven, has to them a, uh, a circle. And from this circle, uh, please don't get this wrong, there is about... Uh, I, I'm not going to get this wrong. I'm going to make sure this is correct because I know there is significance to this. Um... There's about, like, seven equidestant little uh, lines that all strike out from the centre and intersect with the circle that they surround. One of these symbols are found into the palm of one of the guys, and without a tattoo. And yes, this is uh, ten spokes radiating out from its circumference. That is what you see. Okay, now that I'm down here, I do have uh, investigations, so I want to know, I want to pull a Batman, one of those uh, that you see, have you uh, watched like Batman game? Oh yeah, yeah, I've like... played Telltale Batman, I know exactly, you want to have like a silhouette as you rewind the image and deconstruct everything, and you yeah. most definitely do so, and something immediately strikes you with your honed bird-like senses and while you're reconstructing this whole scene your cat-like senses tells you that there are birds nearby and suddenly in a sudden strike these black genku strike out at you from within the hidden boxes that they've been lurking in and pounce upon you everybody roll me initiative <laughs> okay Fun. I was just about I was about to use Divine Sense. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, Divine Sense would have been a good idea, perhaps. Well, it's more of... Uh, undead and... Undead. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> These things wouldn't have been defined as either yeah. of those. Yeah. But no, they, they arm themselves with daggers as they lash out from some of the boxes that they've hidden themselves in. Unfortunately, they heard... Um, they heard Mr. Joker brush his ear to one of the bells when he got too uh, excited. And they have you a surprise. And as far as Adrian knows, uh, all's well in the world. But he will also roll me initiative, please. Isn't even surprised at all. Yes, sir, I already did. Ah, thank you very much. So, oh. uh, if... if uh, did you catch Adrian up through... GM messages or I did indeed. I told him that he's on watch for anybody on the outside charging in. Uh, now, the first order of business is that you guys are currently suffering, suffering from a surprise round. So to begin with, we're going to have um, our first Genku. Oh, and in the handouts, you should see a Genku. These uh, shifty-looking dark bird creatures uh, with... Uh, humanoid appendages by which they're arming themselves with. We begin with this one over here. He comes forward to you and uh, he goes to strike at you in a sudden blow. Okay, at advantage, that is a 24, doing five points of damage to you. Okay, he does two points of damage to me. Why is that? Because right? I have heavy armor master, which means you do. I reduce any damage by three. Any well, non-magical non damage. But still, that's an excellent choice. Yeah. Very nice. Very, very nice. Did you get that for being a variant human? Yes, you did. Ah, yeah. That's excellent. I like that, Melina. Very nice. Alright. 
Next one's going to be this one as he tries to take a... He's trying to take Braggy out from the back. Just coming right in and going to uh, lunge at him. Now what's interesting is that as he does this, he mimics Joker's Mew as he like rashed out to that rat earlier. This this bird-like creature mimics it and just goes Row! as he goes forward to lunge into your back. And that, he that's does That's a weird looking cat. Well, it is a weird looking cat. <laughs> and he does a crit. Oh. Take, giving you 13 points of damage, which I can see knocks you out. Wait, can I uh, stone's endurance? You can stone's endurance. You can indeed. Oh, <laughs> excellent. Beautiful. Very, very nice. Yes, yeah, so you'll turn that 13 into... Uh, oh. Does stone endurance require a reaction? Uh, yeah, I think. Ah, surprise. Combat surprise. I'm interested here. I'm interested here. Clatter swords. Okay, next page. Surprise, surprise. Um, surprise! Fan adventure, one side. Okay, who is surprised, you guys? If neither side is stealthy. Okay. If you want. If you. If you're surprised, you can't move or take actions on your first turn of combat. And you can't take a reaction until the Shit. turn ends. I knew that might um, be the case. We're fucked. <laughs> yes, you might be fucked. Uh, you will not be able to use your stone endurance yet, and you will go down in the first stab. Mm. Alrighty. Following that up. We have this little Genku over here who's going to charge forward at Molina. Uh, no, he's not. He's going to stay where he is and try a short bow on her. That is a 24, and that four points of damage is reduced to one point, I believe. Mm -hmm. Excellent. This last one, <clears throat> he will go for Joker uh, with a short sword. Whew. He does a 23... And does eight points of piercing damage. Ow. Yes, ow indeed. Surprise round is over. And we begin with Joker's turn. Hmm. Looks like we're going to die before we unleash the level two. Either way. Surprise, they caught me on stilt, but that's fine. Uh, well, once they appear you... followed by a... Yeah, once you came down to this like open space area... And having given your position away with the bell ringing, uh, these creatures were aware of your presence since then. Well, first thing first, a rip. Alright, that is a hit. Uh, you are getting that sneak attack from where, may I ask? No, I do not. Okay, very I, well. I must have been forgetting to uh, take out the box, but I did uh, 8 piercing. You do, and that's a great sum of damage. In that damage alone, you catch this bird creature straight into its uh, chest, and you've already done a mighty shot to it as that as it like squawks and recoil back in agony, as that already hurt it quite badly. Very nice. You have an offhand attack if you can choose to use it. You've got a dagger or a paw. Yes, yes. Ooh, so close. With the dagger, you instill in it a massive scratch mark, tearing off feathers from its um, face where it, where its beak protrudes from as you leave it very bloodied, very, very hurt, but it can, it's still alive. All right. That's unfair. But anything I'm else okay you do, your turn? Uh, is there anything I can do to give a disadvantage or maybe attempt to run? Um... Do you have cunning action at this level? I don't believe no, you do. No, but I have feline agilities. Let's have a look. Uh, allows you to move... But oh, Okay. Uh, when you move your turn, you can double your speed until the end of your turn. So, no. You'll get attacks of opportunity. Uh, cast cause, feline agility. Cat's talent. Uh, you don't. You have what has been described out loud for you. Uh, you'll have to make sense of it from there. 
Hmm. I can't do any dodging action either. Oh well. No, not yet. That's my turn. Okay, Melina, it's your turn. Yep. <clears throat> so Melina will call out for backup. She okay. Like just yell backup. Yep. Excellent. Uh, Adrian will be able to hear it as. Uh... Oof. 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 Okay. Uh, oh, do others. <laughs> Yeah. Hmm. What's your passive constitution? And by that I mean eight, uh, ten plus your constitution modifier, please. Ah, uh, that'd be two, so twelve. Hmm. Adrian, I want you to give me a perception check, please. My perception is negative one. Let's do this. Oh God. All right, you're actually going to miss this, unfortunately. You're going to miss uh, hearing her from this distance, as uh, there's just too much walls in the way, and it's quite a way. A, a strong wind comes by across the street that makes her more drowned out, which uh, does make this more difficult, it has to be said. Okay. Um... So yeah, uh, Melina, that was a free action. You have your regular turn yeah. if you wish to take it. Yep. Yeah, so she's going to uh, she's going to strike at uh, this one right in front of her. Very good. Uh, Let's see the attack roll. That oof. is a miss. All right. Not uh, yeah, that's a miss. Uh, I don't take it. You take a uh, attack of opportunity. You stay where you are. And next turn. Yeah. All right. Very good. Continuing on, we now go to Adrian. Adrian, from a distance, you can see a gathering of uh, several city watchmen. Uh, several, in fact. Several veterans. And one very esteemed looking, uh, like, silver armoured guy between them. And they are definitely converging on your location. I am going to very uh, quickly cast a message to the... This is me not metagaming here. Oh, I know. Um, I, I would cast it on Braggy because he seemed the most sane so far. Interesting. I, I know he's unconscious, but I'd cast I mean, the message his way. Technically, well. Melina was the one that told you to message her. Oh, yeah, that would have been... Okay. That, yeah, she would have instilled the plan. If she had way. said that, then I would do it her, her she way has. then. Um, yeah, she has. So, this would ignore any walls or anything Correct. And yeah that's definitely within 180 feet so yes. that's within range so i would uh send a message her way and basically just say literally just one word guards and i would yep. uh actually start heading the guards way to maybe try and distract them all right melina be, you may be... respond in a 25 message word a uh, 25 yeah. word message to the, certainly yeah, she she basically just replies, uh, under attack by bird people. Okay, that's seven. You have a full twelve remaining. Braggy's down. Okay. That's all she okay. needs to really say. So, if she includes that Braggy's down, I would actually, instead of going there to try and distract them, um, are there any windows on the side closest to me? Uh, from your position... Uh, this is the closest window here. Uh, this is a mirror of the uh, side you're at. So where you are is the exact same as being here, essentially. So the nearest window for you would be coming in like this. Okay. Or you might go through... Well, you've got this fence here that also makes it difficult. So you've got to go to here. And by this point, you may as well just... Yeah come in through the front door okay i yeah that's what i would attempt to do very well use your movement find a 
window to peek through and cast fireball through if needed, so... Well, the Zentum have chosen their base, or rather one of their extra bases as well, so that there are less windows for people to pry in. A nice reclusive place to hide their activities, mm -hmm. certainly. I already used my action for message, so I can go this. Okay. Very well. Alrighty. Uh, that is Adrian's turn. Braggy, give me a death saving foe, please. Very nice. One pass. <coughs> now to the Genku. Uh, the Genku nearest you will give you a s short sword. No longer with advantage because they have lost their surprise now. And that will be a miss on a nine. Following that, this one stumbles over Braggy and goes to continue to try and stab you. Taking the same luck he had at the beginning. Misses on a 13. This one over here tries to short bow you. And now he will get some luck as he hits with a 18. Doing 6 points of damage that you reduce to 3. And finally this dead really hurt one. Uh, he is going to take um, a disengage action. And he's going to move... Over here. And that is their turn. Joko, it's over to you. Okay. Five foot. I mean, uh, going down there. And uh, which one of them? None of them is hurt. Oh, uh, none of them are hurt, correct. But I'm a Jensen to air someone that I can strike. So I'm going to strike that dude away. Certainly, yes. And that, if I know accordingly, would be a sneak attack. That is a sneak attack, it is. Okay. Okay, that is a hit. And that Genku, whichever which one do you choose? He is dead, killed outright as you stab him straight through the heart as he squeals and squawks and just collapses down before you. And then okay. dagger. Hmm. Whew. Very, oh. very nice, but no sneak attack as you have used your one per turn. And okay, so that would be uh, five piercing. That is five pier piercing, yes, exactly. Very nice, very nice. And you just completely uh, jab that into the side of his beak as you widen that mouth as blood tarnishes your dagger. Very nice. Melina, it's your turn. Okay, so now that she can, she doesn't have to disengage from that one, she will move here, and she's going to use Lay on Hands. Very nice. And bring Baggy, Braggy up to health. Uh, I'm just going to use all four of them on him. Oh, right. You should have Sweet. five. I've already used one uh, from last session, and we haven't actually rested <clears throat> since then, I believe. Oh, uh, very well. The, you did oh, wait, go to your home. Yeah, we have rested. Yeah, yeah, right. No, I was thinking I thought for a minute that I thought that was uh, after we woke up. Never mind. So, yeah. It's all cool. I will give you some five. All right, I'm back. Woo. Time to kick some ass. Yes, indeed it is. There we go. Yes, yeah, certainly. So, Melina, good round. Uh, Adrian, it's over to you. You can see the guard Alrighty. still uh, coming upon your position. I am going to uh, dash to here. Okay. And then I'm actually going to yell out uh, there and here, guards. You're going to yell out to the guards. They, they are in here. Very well. Oh, no. Very well. Okay. Braggy, it is your turn. Alright. I will use my ram to try kill that one. Uh, very good. You use your portable ram, which provides no damage otherwise. Portable ram. Yep, advantage on strength checks. Plus four bonus, giving you advantage on a strength check. Very good. Uh, okay. You use the ram as it was intended to knock a creature over. Give me a athletic shove attempt with a plus four. 
Uh, wait. Wait, how do <clears throat> I have a weapon in my uh, I wait, I made it a weapon. Yeah, you absolutely have weapons, but you decided to use a portable ram, yeah, which is but used I made, to break down it... doors and a plus four I'm... strength check. I made it as a weapon in my stats, in my uh, character sheet. What weapon does so... it resemble? Totem. Totem is not a weapon in the player's handbook. What weapon no, did but... you follow after? Nothing. I just made it a uh, non proficiency, the plus strength, and 1d8. Okay, so you stylize it after a Warhammer. That will do just yeah. fine. Or a mace for that matter. Very good. Uh, yes, I suppose you are not proficient with it. Uh, roll for attack. Alright. Alright, that is a hit. And yeah, yeah, that will be uh, 10 points of damage, and uh, you will crush. That Genku into the ground beneath you, killing him as you bash his skull in. Easy. <laughs> Very nice. Right. Uh, yeah, I'll just move over here. Mm -hmm. And that's my turn. Very good. Alrighty. Uh, it is now this Genku's turn. Uh, this Genku is going to come forward. And he is going to try and uh, stab you with a short sword, Mr. Braggy. He rolls yeah. a 22 and does 8 points of piercing damage to you. Now I can use my stone stones. Yes, and yes, 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 you can. Oh, oh you take nice. none of it. You take none of it as the blade just can't cut you. It just can't cut through your skin. Rock solid. Exactly. And uh, in fear, and seeing this, taking uh, the attack of opportunity, he shall try to uh, move away. So you can, but you use your reaction for the stones in Germans. Oh yeah, cheeky. Yes, very cheeky. Uh, now this one over here, he's going to go. Whoop, hang on. He's going to go. Whoop, ah, he is go going. To go to the stairway. Uh, and this, Oh, that's in the darkness. Uh, but from his position, he's going to short bow down into uh, you, Mr. Cat. You, Mr. Joker. That's a 17 doing four points of damage to you. I'm down. Yes. <laughs> 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 nice. Uh, very good. Uh, Joker, it's your turn now. Make me a death saving foe. Ah, okay. That is one failure. Alright, Melina, it's your turn. Okay. So, Melina will rush this guy with the bow. Well, that was shooting at her with the bow earlier. And she is just basically, as she rushes, she just sort of pounces and stabs with her longsword. All right, very good. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah, that, 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 well, actually, on a crit, this Genku just barely manages to hang in there uh, as you slice and dice through him, certainly. Longsword in hand, he hangs in there, but... He definitely squawks in a great bit of pain as he makes the noise of a baby crying and whimpering. So, no, he makes the sound of a puppy whose tail has just been stepped on, partially through, like, coughing blood, essentially. Mm -hmm. Adrian Fairband, it's your turn. Okay, I'm gonna head on in. Can I... Can I actually stand over... Uh, Joker to try and like body block. I well, guess. firstly, you'll have to make a athletics check to open this huge, fifteen foot wide, moat sized doorway that is used as this warehouse's entryway. Though you won't have to do anything, provided this sideway door is unlocked for you. If it is, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, I would like to go through the sideways door, and I think I can just barely make it to him. 
You go Maybe to the sideways I'll... door to see if it's unlocked, and unfortunately, it is very much locked. <laughs> hmm. Okay. So, I'm not going to try and force it open. Instead, I'm going to acid splash uh, ah. the lock to eat, to eat through it and get oh, through. Yeah. Oh, I'll allow that. Yeah, you cast a spell. Uh, is it's a uh, it's a deck save. It's not an attack roll, is it? Yes, it is a deck save. Very good, very good. Yep, the yep, the lock automatically fails and does corrode and melt away. Uh, the doorway pries open, and the doorway is uh available for you. It it, it parts for you. Okay. Uh, so that's that's my action right there. Uh, I still have, like, 15 feet of movement, which would just barely get me here to, like, stand over him. Yeah, yeah. To try and block you, anything. You, before you lie a sad-looking Palicos, <laughs> looking Abasi, just, like, lying on the floor, like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, I can't do anything for you, so... You can... Well, besides, yeah, just know. try and body block You can hold something. my hands as, I, as my, uh... Five and six of my cat life is leaving my body. <laughs> exactly. Mm. That's about all I can do. Very good. All right, Braggy, it's your turn. I don't know the guards are coming. <sighs> Shit. I mean, mm. we haven't really done anything wrong, though. Uh, break and entering, at least. I mean, this is a gang's building. Uh, probably a hideout. But yeah. uh, it's still suspicious that dead people, not dead corpses, are, uh, corpses. Yeah, are there are seven people dead. A lot of yeah. people dead. But either way, yeah, we don't know the god is coming, and we no don't matter. know. The god. Yeah. I take, I take out my axe and try to throw it at this guy. Uh, very good. That is a distance of forty feet, going, I believe. 20 feet beyond what you comfortably can throw at, so this will be made a disadvantage. Yep. Correct. That, at disadvantage, is going to be a hit, and yes. in that like, nice movement, you bring your hammer, or your hand axe, straight into his chest as he collapses there on the staircase, dead. Bullseye. Yes, exactly. All right. Uh, all right. Um, wait, I can move a little bit more, can I? Yeah. Just, I'm gonna <clears throat> kind of grab Joker. Uh, well. Like lift, lift One of the things that you can do is that because the hand axe has the light quality, you can throw your other hand axe at the other Genku if you wanted to. Oh, uh, offhand like that? Yes, you can. You would not get your uh. You would not get your strength bonus to this other attack, but you could still do 1d6 damage to him. Alright, but uh, Melina's... Melina is around there, sure. Can I go on to these boxes here? Uh, well, these are now actually tables and whatnot, with a uh, oh. much larger like uh, framework and whatnot. But yes, you can certainly go on those. Alright, I jump on and try... By all means. that guy now. Yeah, go for it. And that is a miss. Yeah. Damn. All right, this Genku is uh, pretty desperate. He's just going to see if he can have a good time trying to kill Melina. Uh, not on a thirteen, Joker. Death saving throw for me, please. That is another failure, Joker. Somebody's being phoned. Interesting. Oh, Joker, one more failure and you're dead. Yeah. Melina, it's your turn. Okay. Now she's going to try and finish this guy off. Yeah, let's hope for the best. Oh, oh my god! You behead that Genku. As he falls flat and dies. Absolutely excellent. Very nice. You've beaten all of the Genku in the room. But we're not out of combat yet. As uh, we still have the situation of dealing with uh, 
Oh, dying Joker. It's still <clears> your <throat> turn, Melina. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, I can't do anything. I've used all my land hands. I knew I should have just kept one point. Yeah. Damn. I didn't realize how low on health. Uh, uh, we can stabilize him at least, right? Yeah. Yeah, I don't have medicine though. Mm. Or spare the dying. I have. Oh, very nice. Uh, it's my turn, or it is still yeah, Melina's be, turn. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll end my turn. You end your turn. You Good. Okay, Agent Firebrand's turn. Okay. Uh, I know I can't do anything to help Joker. That's incorrect. So I am. In... You can most certainly do a medicine check. If it fails, no harm comes to him. If you pass, you can give him a successful save. I could. However, I don't think I can do anything for him. Okay. It would be the better way of putting it. Or my character wouldn't. Very well. Um, so I am instead going to cast Message in the direction of the guards towards the the one, I guess, fancier one you had described? The one that looked like the leader? Message requires you to be somewhat familiar with these people, and you are not familiar with these people at all. Uh... When I had read message, it said, just said a creature within range. Yeah, yeah. you have to see them if you don't know them. Mm. I believe. Actually, yeah, I, I see that. You can cast it through solid objects if you're familiar with the target. And yeah. know it is beyond the barrier, but I'm not familiar with them. Nah. So it wouldn't work that way. Okay. Um, in that case, then... Uh, I, I would know this, correct? I wouldn't... Yeah, correct. Indeed. Okay. It's just an innate thing that tells you that uh, uh, I just haven't really sat down with them. This is just a small little limitation to your uh, common abilities. So, I'm instead going to possibly kill myself okay. by walking outside. Um, uh, right here. Can I see them from here? Yes, you can. Through the fence, I am going to see they're coming. I am going okay. to do it now. Okay, yeah, uh, certainly. Uh, what is your message? Basically, just please help. There's people injured inside. Uh, basically, because the message spell allows you to respond, be responded to, uh, the guy who you choose to speak to uh, responds promptly, firmly, and calmly. Get to the ground, hands behind your head, down arms. Do I need to do an action for that? You can or just tell me that you agree to it and we're good. Oh, I am definitely agreeing to that, yeah. Very gonna... well. Alright. Uh, Braggy, it's your turn. Right. Uh, go over here and try to medicine check it. Alright. Very nice. Let's see it, Braggy. That is a pass for uh, for Mr. Joker. Nice. Very nice indeed. Okay, Joker, don't uh, don't fail or else you're dead. Oh. <gasps> oh. Damn it. Oh. Oh. And Melina that day forward left one hit point of lay on hands for situations like this. <laughs> no. Although, did you not oh, have shoot. some spell slots? Oh no, not you this level. Nah. No. Unfortunately, say, as, I, as I've always said, level one is the most deadliest in freaking this game. Ah, oh, mm. certainly. Uh, no, Mr. Joker, you have died. Just yep. unfortunately, those uh, you... Buggy can see can see like all the nine lives just floating up into the needles. Wait, what does spare the dying do? It stops people from dying. I'm I'm sorry I'm sorry to say it that way. If they're in a death saving throw state, they just stop and are stabilized. I thought someone had. Uh, I guess I wasn't listening to that part. There, I was thinking of other things. Very well, uh, Joker. You'll find that you have a new character sheet waiting for you. Yep, new Joker's. <laughs> I'm gonna call it Punk. Nice. <laughs> now mix it around a bit. I can help you with. Uh, New bits and pieces. Uh, private message me what you come up with, and I can help with some little tidbits. Uh, but immediately, your Joker gives one final hairball and dies. 
there on the ground in the middle of this whole scene. With that, we go out of combat. The guards come forward, charging in, and uh, they basically just make their presence immediately known. While you are made prone, uh, Mr. Adrian Fairbrand, two come mm -hmm. either side of you, take you by your arms, and drag you inward while they tell you to just keep your arms down. Uh, which, uh, are you a local? I am. You know that down yes, arms is, uh, is the city watch way of saying, uh, put down your arms as to in, uh, keep yourself unarmed and to not strike out at anybody really. Uh, that's the overall yeah. message there. Um, mm -hmm. so as they enter, Molina will immediately, uh, start to try and uh more we'll speak to them all right uh, they're probably going to come in shouting uh no they do not come in shouting quite actually uh they come in and they uh take an immediate look at the scene they are appalled to see uh the death and whatnot uh naturally but soon after that uh one or two of them uh take out a small little uh notepads with uh little bits of quill and ink as uh, they assemble what bits of detail they can. Uh, they do yeah. go through some of the bodies and they do see the variety of tattoos. And as they do so, uh, their expressions turn somewhat more understanding as uh, they basically seem to be quite familiar with the situation. Yeah. Melina will approach the one that looks like the captain. Yes, uh, this appears to be uh, a gentleman who, though part of the City Watch, uh, doesn't wear his helm as uh, this... Were no, he wears his helmet. He wears his helmet, as you will see here. He uh, looks... Um, well, it's you can't actually make out his expression from beneath that helmet. Though, when he does, uh, when he does like, see you guys come forward, he basically says um, immediately... Unsheave yourselves of your weapons now, and we'll get yeah. started. Melina's already got a long sword just sort of sitting on the side next. Well, she probably left it on the ground next to uh, mm. uh, Joker as she was sort of mourning slightly. She didn't get to know him enough, but she does sort of blame herself for not having that one, that one little bit of energy left for lay on hands. <laughs> yeah, happens. Uh, essentially, uh, he just, uh, he basically, you know, he's seen a lot of this before, uh, though, um, he continues to, uh, just assess the situation, and, uh, he goes forward and basically says, uh, I am sorry for your friend, uh, I don't know how much you know or how much you've been involved in this current ongoings, but this was your own fault to begin with. You should not have been in this rundown area. What were you doing we here? Were, Melina says, we were following up um, a lead on a job that we have. That's not your job we, to do. Uh, as our, we are looking for a missing person. It is what we were hired to do. He, uh, he uh, rolls his eyes. Uh, well, he doesn't. You, know, you can't see that. Yeah. Uh, but essentially... Uh, he just, like, quietly just sort of listens to you as he goes, Go on, then. Yes, we were following up a lead on this missing person, and as we entered this building, we saw this scene, and then shortly after, the uh, Kenku attacked. And you went straight to the City Watch to tell us of the danger. We were, we were ambushed. We, By the time we finished... Defending ourselves from the ambush, you showed up. Hmm. I would. I just point out. As soon as I knew what was happening, I called out for your assistance. One of the guardsmen do come forward, and uh, he gives a bit of a distant nod. Uh, just as they do that, uh, they come to over this area here, where uh, this guy goes back and says, uh, uh, "Sergeant, I have found somebody back here." And uh, he brings forward this red-haired gentleman uh, who basically kind of like dusts himself off and uh, 
He smells a bit of sour vinegar and fish, while he does seem to carry with him an air of nobility to him as uh, he walks on down. Now, uh, for those of you checking, he does appear handsome. He does have red hair. Uh, though a dunderhead, he does not be, seem to be, <laughs> as uh, he speaks with a very calm uh, tone, uh, well, an elegant tone, rather, as he just goes, Ah, oh, the watch most definitely has come to my aid. Thank you so very much, gentlemen. I was afraid you'd never get here. And uh, the sergeant basically sees that uh, this is most definitely a noble, and no less a noble at that. Um, having seen him, uh, Melina, being the noble between you, and having proficiency in history, right? Um, I saw you had proficiency in history. That would be me, I think, that has the, that's the noble with the history proficiency. Who, um, you, Adrian? Yes, I do have proficiency mm. in history. I will let you make this check with advantage, please. Already just give me a moment. Yeah, there I've also go. got history, but I'm... Yeah. Well, yeah, oh. between the two of you, you know, uh, advantage, all of it. So on that check, you know that this is the former open lord, da Dagold Neverember's son. Uh, otherwise known as Renar Neverember. Essentially, he is uh, the son of a former prime minister, if you like. The son of a former governing lord of Waterdeep herself. So his nobilic status uh, has uh, great significance here. He is no lesser noble. He is certainly of some higher grade. Certainly higher than me. Very much so, okay. yes. Uh, so I would like to just bow to, he bow to him and say, pardon me for the intrusion, sir. Adrian Fairburn, at your service. Uh, if you don't mind me asking, would you happen to know a man named Volothamp? Get uh, on. I'm sorry, my good man, who? But also, uh, no, no need for the formalities, please. Uh, maybe when my father was uh, still lord here, this was all very much needed, but, you know, now, they, now that the open lord has changed to Lady S uh, Silverhand, you needn't be so formal with me. Plus, I don't know that my father that terribly well. Um, so please, rise, rise. I do so. Um, he does look to the guards as he does say, um, I treat this one's well. I, n I was hiding in there from those bird creatures while I did hear, hear a scuffle that came up from above stairs. I believe these these esteemed swords did help give me a head start and protected me just somewhat earlier than you did. They mean well, Sergeant. Please, if you would just gently uh, be kind towards them, I would very much appreciate it. And... Uh, the sergeant definitely, uh, he, 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 like, locks himself up in a, in a stance as he definitely goes, Sir, it would be my pleasure to, uh, assure you that these fine individuals, uh, will be taken care of and looked after. Uh, but he, uh, definitely comes forward as he, uh, goes to you, Melina, and he hands, he says to you that, uh, in a lesser tone, he goes, um, so quite honestly, if this lord likes you, then we have no issue. And I already know that this is part of uh, more frequent cult-like wars that are going on between Xanathar and Zentrim. It, it would serve you very well to stay out of it, lest you get caught up in it, much like your friend has there. So I would tell you to go back home, take care of yourself, uh... And after we're done here, go back to the upper side. You know, the dock wards are not safe for people at the moment. And he hands you a parchment, which is, as you can see from the handout, the code legal. And it is as uh, it is described. It lists the laws of Waterdeep and <laughs> everything else that's included. 
uh, such as, um, well, assaulting a noble will get you the 10 uh, days of hard labor, the lashings and the 500 gold piece fine, all that beautiful, wonderful, delicious rules and regulations. M Melina, she, she's like, I, I know what this is, and I would... Uh... I would actually ask, what are we in a uh, offense of? You're in a if, you're uh, in offense of nothing. You have come to the aid of a noble, uh, exactly. which is very gen generous of you. Though you still should have left it in the hands of the city watch. <laughs> so we. We got attacked by... We were simply following up on a lead and we were ambushed. So how is it that we were supposed to leave it in the hands of the city watch? Simple. You don't take the lead. Or rather, you give that information to us. Either way, though, you were trying to do things your own end. One of you has died for it. That is our job to die on your behalf. You understand? That's what we give our lives and duty for. That is understood, sir. I apologize for what has occurred here today. We just heard the situation and believe that some sort of intervention as soon as possible in order to preserve the life of this man was necessary. Hence why I called out to you as I took action myself. I believe that those few seconds might make all the difference. Oh, yes. And yes, obviously yes, yes. I'm just BSing here. Because I didn't even know the noble was in there, but he's not particularly uh, persuaded by your BSing, but he acts as though he appreciates it nonetheless. It's a uh, mm -hmm. it's a subtlety that uh, you are picking up from him, um, and uh, as he continues on, he essentially just says that uh, uh, if you continue to insist on being involved in these situations. Make sure you keep the blood off the streets. That's going to be a key importance. After all, if you're determined to see to it that you are the ones getting hurt, then make sure it's not in our jurisdiction. Understood, sir. And with that, he just carries on his own way. Uh, now, you guys are... well. Venia uh, definitely comes up towards you, uh, approaching the rest of you, and he says uh, to you that uh, I am very terribly sorry for your um, cat friend, your your fine feline friend. I do apologize uh, for my part in what has led to this unfortunate misunderstanding. I don't think it's me that you're after, by the way. Do you know a man named Flume? I do, yes. Uh, he and I left the uh, tap room uh, one evening, uh, shortly after uh, a little game of whatnot. Uh, but, um, yeah, no, uh, excuse me. Yes, after uh, he was in a very dizzy sort. Uh, the poor gentleman... Uh, Took, I took a likeness to him that evening, uh, since he seemed as though he might need help going home. So I escorted him. Uh, it was it was during that trip out that we were jumped by those five ruffians that came upon us suddenly in the dead of night and charged down on us. I need somebody. Okay. Um, and uh, he then just goes on to uh, say that um, that when when we when they were bringing us back here. The Zentrum thinks that my father embezzled a large amount of gold while he was an open lord, uh, and that he hid the dragons somewhere in the city. They think they can find it by using an artifact called the Stone of Golor, which was in the hands of the Xanathar Guild until uh, recently. Apparently, somebody stole it. The Zent thought I knew something about all this, but I don't. My father and I haven't spoken in years. And I don't believe it in a second. I apologize for the misunderstanding. We were told to that Floon was a handsome red haired man and you fit the bill. Uh, Just sort of laying on the flattery to try and. <laughs> yeah, certainly. 
Uh, he is so nonchalantly accustomed to it that he doesn't give it more than a second thought. You know, this is how he deserves to be treated, or rather, this is how he knows he is to be treated. So, uh, he is very much accustomed to it. He does, like, ponder that, um, I do very much hope Floon is okay, the poor chap. He, I never really found out, uh, well... They were taking us north towards Astro Street when we were kidnapped. Uh, Floon was kidnapped along with myself. They apparently had us mixed up, so they took the pair of us, just to be sure. And um, when we were both here, uh, those Xanathar types came by, slaughtered and killed, and they took Floon with them. Uh, but from there, I don't know. I was stashed away in that rank little cupboard space, and uh, I didn't see what happened next. You've helped us far more than anyone else has, sir. Uh, well, it was, uh, it was my pleasure, I suppose. Just make sure you find this poor chap. He really, uh, he's way in over his head at the moment, I do imagine. And there was silence. Oh. Okay, so uh, how mm -hmm. do you guys proceed from here? <sighs> I step out the door and vomit profusely <laughs> after just holding it, barely holding it in because this is the first time I've seen a dead body up close. Oh, very well, yes. You uh, most definitely go outside and wretch, releasing a gout of... Uh, um, terribly uh, uncomfortable bile, as you certainly do. Let it all fly free for a moment. Um, and uh, you try to forget the uh, the stench of uh, dead corpses in your nostrils, for sure. Yep. I go and pick up my hand axes. Hmm. Uh, yeah, you go to pick them up. Uh, the uh, the guard basically uh, let you move about as you see fit at this point. Um, you know they uh, they basically ask you an occasional question of uh, if the Genku that you had said anything uh, or if they did anything. It's a shame you didn't keep any alive. They would have loved to have questioned them. Uh, but all the same, Melina just uh, basically tells them that. Uh, they just kept on mimicking sounds they've heard. Yes, Genku are known to do that. They can't make any noise of their own, so they copy and mimic. Head back in. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay, so while you had all settled back in, the task remains that you still need to find Floon. And with your lead here telling you that there must have been some kind of mix-up between this lord and between Floon himself, that you may need to pound the streets again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We lost our lead, though. Yeah, well, there's can... things happen. What lead do we have? we have now uh, I mean... you got to pound the streets again and essentially yeah. find out where those that uh, came to fight these uh, Zentium members here uh, went on and took him back no, like, no doubt taking you into the heart of the Xanathar guild potentially hmm. well, yeah, uh, we'll uh, try and get the others sort of out of earshot of some of the guards because she does have an idea and she wants to sort of get their opinion on it. Uh, well, you are welcome to leave this place now if you do want to. Uh, prior to that, I would like to just ask uh, one of the guards, pardon me, but what should we do about... And I gesture over towards Joker, uh, our friend over there. Uh, they basically say that... Uh... It would be untowards if you were to take him out into the street and unsettle the other folk. Uh, we of course, will of we will take him and bury him ourselves. I thank you kindly for that, sir. If you wouldn't mind, could you let us know where you bury him? 
And I, I, I give him my name and where they can find my family's estate. They uh, say, uh, sure. Leave it that. Thank you, my good sir. All right. So, uh, yeah. How do you guys proceed? <clears throat> so, I'm going to head out here. Mm -hmm. Just to see if anyone... Please don't step in my pile of puke out there. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, go on. So she basically says, um, one possible idea is that it's, it's probably the worst idea, but just finding these uh, Xanathir and trying to get answers out of them, beating them out of them if we have to. That's a gang, though. We already found one, yes. didn't we? Yes, you did. The the gnome. Also, the... we could talk to the half orc and woman back at the tavern. She yeah. Know... That too, yes. You may well try that, certainly. Um. Now that we're out of danger, I just bring out my bubble pipe again and I play with it. <laughs> Yeah, very I well. Ta I take it uh, Jogo was properly barrel, or you can throw him in the trash. He's he's a nation. <laughs> nah, he he's getting properly buried. Or okay. they just said that, and you may get thrown in the trash. It's not a topic that <laughs> uh, will continue to pursue your waking days as you hunt down Floon for the time being. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So. Because we. Don't exactly know where this uh, half orc woman is unless she's still at the uh, yawning portal. It's yeah. a chance but, at least. Yeah, and, and the barkeep probably knows him. Uh, Durnum. Maybe. I know. It's Honest, a Honestly, I think the better bet is the deep gnome. At least we know where he'll be. Uh, very well. You could. Uh, you can go about that way if you want to. That's the that's my is, suggestion. He, if he is, of course, he's unlikely to actually spill the secrets of his uh, connections. Mm -hmm. I think we should go to to the Yonic Port uh, Tavern first, and if we can't find a there, then go to the no. Seems like a good idea. I can agree with that plan. Okay, right. awesome. So you guys head back to the Yawning Portal. Um, there it is, still uh, kicking and thriving with uh, people as it did before you guys arrived and most definitely years after when you guys die. Um, from the uh, center point, you just seem to enter in as uh, there seems to be a collection of people who are descending into the hole, being lowered in from their uh, cables uh, as uh, the crowds are cheering as they see this uh, this uh, quad pair, or like these two pairs of twins uh, in these very southern-like, turban-like outfits. Uh, it is difficult to make out their appearance and... Uh, what kind of features they have beneath their veiled um, outfits. But two of them appear in a uh, two different shades of blue, a dark azure and a very light sky blue. And the other pair have uh, a very deep crimson and very light ember kind of outfit to them. And those, two, and those four continue to go down into the shaft while you guys just enter in. I just wave at Dernan as I come in, and I just call over, any more trolls today? Uh, Dernan uh, looks over the counter with a bit of a smile, and he uh, definitely says, uh, Nope, no more trolls today. I'm sending some more, well, some more lucky sods are going down there just to clear the place out a bit more. Hmm. I, I nod and look around for... Either the uh, the half orc woman or the just people with the Xanathar Darian uh, tattoos. 
Uh, you will most definitely find the half orc woman again without very much, very, a lot of difficulty. Uh, essentially. Uh, stone. Yes. Uh, Yagava Stonefist, who you still have the handout for. Uh, she most definitely is in the same place. Uh, you remember her, and uh, she goes, um, "Oh, I remember you lot." Yeah, you came by and you helped my you help save my nice ass. Thanks kindly for that. So Melina is going to uh order a cup of tea. There is no tea served here. That's not and true. She would need she... tea. <laughs> I was about to say she wouldn't even be here then because she doesn't drink alcohol. <laughs> well then. Yeah. That will make you all um... fast. <laughs> yeah. I do, and I most certainly can get myself some booze. Nice. And uh, also a drink for Miss Stonefist as well. Uh, of whatever she's currently having. Oh, certainly, <clears throat> yes. Uh, she's having some of the shadow uh, dark ale that was uh, being served by Dunham the last time you were here. And uh, she's just casually putting some of those back while she's enjoying the atmosphere. And uh, she, when you like give her that one, she basically smiles puts a huge beefy arm across your shoulder and neck as she basically goes, Oh, do you fancy me or something, you little man? <laughs> no, 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 no. Maybe I do. <laughs> and she just basically gives a roaring laugh and she slaps you powerfully behind your back as she basically just says, Give over! While that's happening, I buy two beers, <laughs> or god, uh, whatever, and throw, uh, uh, put one down into the hole, and say, one for the road, Joker. Uh, so you can buy, like, a little, uh, a little, like, pint-sized barrel, essentially. You can get, like, a tiny little hand-sized keg that you can, uh, Go away with with ale in it. Uh, do you buy one uh, of those? Just a normal cup. Okay, a or, normal cup, certainly. Yeah. Do you just pour that yeah. contents out? Or, yeah, pour into the bottom of uh, the hole. Okay, awesome. Uh, you decant the contents out into uh, the pit, and uh, from its angle, as it drips by, you can hear for what seems like perhaps. Uh, a three second delay it splashes across the head of uh, the four people that descended down and they begin cursing before one of them suddenly goes oh, 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 and then you just hear that the other one of the others uh, slips as well as perhaps two of them might have fallen to the ground as there are gasps that suddenly empty out into the silence I didn't... Everyone suddenly turns and faces him. I'm guessing. <laughs> no, no, nobody gives him a second eye. It's uh, <laughs> even though you would imagine that it is a uh, echoey kind of well, it is in fact much more like a uh, sound encapsulating kind of vacuous space, sort of devoid of sound and ravenously eating it where it can do so. Um, so while somebody at the edge, like you, can uh, makes you can you can hear it, it's lost to the rest of the rowdy uh, inn or you know bar. Okay, so um, as you were saying, um, yes, uh, you were butcher, and uh, yes, you have Yegra Yegra uh, just to herself. You have her all to yourself if you guys want to talk to her. Which you have been. Okay. You've already engaged in some light casual drinks so far. So yes. Proceed from here. So, um, pardon me, uh, Miss, and I just pause, like, so she can fill in the blank. Uh, what did you say? Because you were cutting out. Sorry. Uh, I say, pardon me, Miss, and I, I pause so she can fill in the blank. Uh, she doesn't pick up on this and just basically goes, well, get on with it. What, what you, get on with it, lad. Yes, yes. Um, I just wanted to ask, what was up with those men the other day? What, oh, what's those your dirty sons of dogs, those blighters, yeah. No, they're killing mates. 
they're killing my uh well ain't anybody you want to get yourself sort of mixed up with sweetheart uh but nah they were just uh pushing us around and didn't expect us to push back they thought they would gang up on one of me We actually just had a bit of trouble with, uh, well, I wouldn't say, if, I'm not sure if they were exactly a gang. We got attacked by Kenku at hmm. the site of a gang massacre. <laughs> this is where it's going to get interesting. And, uh, she basically goes and asks, uh, oh, where would that be? It was, uh, she, get, she gives the name of the, well, the location. Right, uh, interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Um, okay. You seem to know something about, do you know much about the Xanathar? Uh, does she have a tattoo, um, at all? Uh, interesting. Uh, you will have to... Well, in the handout, as provided in the handout that's given to you in the handout, you might notice she wears an interesting necklace in the handout. Mm -hmm. If I can hit that more. However, since you are mentioning uh, opposing the Xenophar Guild... Um, Never said anything about opposing. Alright. It's well. hinted at slightly. Possibly. But... Well, that's not going to help you then. Um... Okay. Uh, hmm. Basically, uh, hmm. <laughs> uh, okay, okay, okay. Well, all right. So, basically, we'll keep role playing this out. What are you asking her? Yeah. Be straightforward with her. So she, she, yeah, she just million basically says we. Came across uh, a little bit of trouble with uh, gangs or cults or whatever you want to call them. And you seem to be at least targeted by one of these uh, gangs. The ones with the eyeballs or the uh, eye tattoos. Oh so, yeah, I know of them. Yes, well, someone, we are looking for a missing person and... Uh, she basically just goes, "Oh, get your story straight. You want to go for the, the well, you want to go for them lot, or you're looking for a missing person. Make up your mind already." Yes, I'm the really only one bit... thing. We got attacked. We're looking for while well, looking for a missing person. There's nothing to misconstrue there. Yeah, but you sure do love to talk. Jeez, I mean, I'll put up with it because. You lovely guys did come to my aid. No, I didn't ask you to, but you did it anyway. But like, oh, could you could you get home with it, please? What is your involvement, and do you know anything about these gangs? She basically goes <laughs> with like a smirk. Finally, oh, yeah, I know about them. Like I say, it's not a kind of life you want to get caught up in, dear. Well, it's or... the... Go ahead. <laughs> she says, we're looking for information. That's well, all we need. Information about what? Like, oof. I, Oh my god! You, Again! Oh. A person that's being kidnapped by one of these gangs. We need to know these gangs. Give the freaking details. Who? Maybe, I, I don't know maybe. about any person who's kidnapped. Give me a name at least so I can help maybe. you. I, I, don't, I got this. We're looking for a handsome red-headed man named Floon. Perchance you know something. Yeah, I might know something about that going on at the moment. You're much more reasonable than she uh, gives you a slap on the shoulders. And uh, she basically goes on to say that um, now that I know who you're after. <laughs> uh, and she like looks over to you again, Melina, with, and like rolls her eyes with a sigh. And she just goes, um, 
The ones you're looking for are the Xenophar Guild. You may have already been smart enough to figure that much out already. What I can help you with is that, that those specky cunts have a back door to their hideout. You can find it at the drunken bladdermouth. Blabbermouth. Um, hang on, yeah. Yeah, the, uh, it's essentially uh, it's essentially a, another bar like this one. But in this basement, you should be able to find another entryway into that place. I can lead you there if you're interested. And uh, it's uh, trust me, it's safer than the route that goes through Under Mountain and Skullport. But it won't come cheap. You don't like these people either, do you? Well, I still owe them for a bit of a beating, don't I? How about the prices that beating with some help? Well, I'll take you there for nothing then. But it'll cost you to get me to go into that uh, that lair. Understood. We can we can work out the details later. All right, then I'll finish this pint and I'll take you there right away. Do we want to go right away? I don't. <clears throat> At least a short rest. I think. Yeah. Well, that's up to you guys. I'm completely fine, but I mean, I know our resident warrior princess is a bit beat up, as is our. Yeah, Ranger. well, I mean, yeah, I, I was going to ask if uh, this is, like, during this moment, is it considered a short rest? Oh, yeah, sure. And uh, also, yeah. at this point, while uh, you're sitting around at the table, um, Volo, he sees you and he goes, Ah, oh, hello! Oh, how am I, How is your search going? And uh, he sees that there is the half forecast there, and he just basically goes, Ooh, Looks like you uh, still have some business to work out with. Uh, I'll leave you to it. I'll, I'll, I'll leave you to it. And uh, he basically just like slinks away, not wanting to get messed up in what otherwise appears to be a very intense conversation between you and this half orc Okay. Uh, so how do you guys proceed from here? Ah, oh, shit. Bloody lay on hands is between long rests? Yes, it is. Mm, yes, indeed. Mm. Okay, well, I'll at least I'll spend my hit dice. How do I do it with this sheet, or do I just have to... You do it with the sheet uh... following the rules of the short rest, which follow that you use your short rest hit die found in your character sheet beneath the temporary hit points. Hit the hit die as it appears in the name, and voila, a roll is done. You then mark off your hit die by one until you have zero. As you have correctly done there, Nathan. Excellent work. Yep. It might also interest you that uh, there seems to be a... Well, uh, Mr. Plunk, Punk, uh, how is your character coming along? Um, I'm on adding a flaw right now, and I should be all set. Yeah, you're set enough, I would believe. Uh, you can approach these guys for whatever reasons you're looking for people in this uh, in this party at the moment. Okay, no, so um, a... yeah, no, uh, allow me. Uh... So naturally, being a bit new to this place, you want to find some of the more tougher sorts that look as though uh, they may be able to help you around the place. And this crew that's currently talking to this half-orc lady does seem to know where, what they're up to. And it, you just get a good feeling. You just have a good feeling towards them. That these are people you might want to seek out, Pong. Okay. Uh, as, you are, uh, as you guys are talking, so, uh, a cobble, I would say a cobble, cobble a scale cobalt, kind of approaching you. Uh, kobolds wouldn't be something we really normally see here, would they be? Uh, 
not so much, but people of Waterdeep are very much used to all sorts. I mean, kobolds would certainly perhaps be seen here more than your average run-of-the-mill capital. Uh, there will certainly be all manner of people who are transformed into several other views. Needless to say, if you look to the very left of us, we can already see a collection of three little lizard men all lined up yeah. there. So, you know, this place is happy to see all sorts of all shapes and sizes. Gargoyles that have turned sentient. And the water deep behavior is just that everybody is a bit blasé to everything new and exciting that's around here. So, much like that, uh, you most certainly would uh, sort of... Yeah, a, a kobold could be found in Waterdeep, certainly. Because all things can be found okay. in Waterdeep. Understood. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. Well, I am I was hearing you uh, talking about this uh, Satari... Uh, what is it? Sataria? Satari? And uh, I was uh, trying to locate that guild for many, many years that I had been working as a merchant. But... Uh, since you are going there, I think that would be nice if uh, we could go along and tag along, you know? I... I do not think you would like to be doing what we're about to be doing. And I look over to Miss Stonefist, and... It's like, we're going <laughs> oh, to it's be... It's not like uh... you just lost a member or something. <laughs> wow, excellent. But uh, hear me out. I uh, I have been uh, working a lot on my trades, and uh, thing doesn't get it out uh, on my ends. Uh, I have a lot of debts, and uh, I heard that Satarius Guild seem to have something. Maybe something I can take, or maybe something I can ask or request. And uh, as I told you, I've been uh, trying to locate the place for a long time now, and. Since it's hard, lady, nice talk, ladies here said that there is a chance of getting there. I say there's no. I am a merchant, yeah, and I think there is the, such a risk would worth the reward. <sighs> you I mean... guys love the long silences, but sorry, go on. Yeah. Yeah. When well, it says, uh,. You can you can fend for yourself, correct? Yes, I think so. And she and he pull out a short sword and just like, yeah, yeah, I think I can. I mean, just carry a sword, but that's beside the point. As long as we do not have to babysit you and you are responsible for your own actions, I do not mind. Uh you tagging along. Excellent. Hope. And you can I see you... Uh, his tail is whacking. Mm -hmm. I Lovely. hope that you understand that death is a very real possibility and what we're about to venture out towards. We've already had one friend die just today. Hmm. That's too bad. But, uh... This I'm sure he I was a real great water. guy. I'm sure he was an excellent, real great guy. Uh, in any case, I'm willing to accept that date. I've been in debt right now, and if I die, well, there's no longer... I no longer need to worry about debt and taxes, especially bankers and some loan shark. Actually, I suppose an important question is... Is this debt going to bring us any trouble? No loan sharks. Oh no 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 no! no. It, we, it's just one of those things that we, it, we, it's just one of those uh, debt that I asked from one of my guild members. It, it's nothing serious. Yet. Then so be it. Ominous foreshadowing. <laughs> <laughs> Ominous foreshadowing, indeed. Right, but um. If you are ready to proceed, Yagara can certainly uh, take you around to uh, the back entrance. Oh, well, she can take you to the, uh, oh, what did you say? The blabbering mouth, the blabber mouth, essentially. Uh, yeah, the drunken mm -hmm. blabber mouth. That's it. I'm good to go. Uh, actually, what time is it right now? It is very late in the evening at this point, certainly. Yeah, we've been walking around all day. 
and you have had to you've had, had a rough fight. The loss of your friendly furry furry friend has certainly weighed heavy on you for sure. And Lena will uh, say, "Perhaps you got best we rest for tonight." You got. Will you be here tomorrow? Uh, she goes. Yeah, I'm here every day. I'm happy to uh, wrestle and with uh, everybody who comes by, and I hope you. Uh, I have fun seeing if I'm stronger than they are. On my head. We'll we'll swing by tomorrow and take you up on your offer. Very good. I'll make sure I ain't going anywhere. Thank you. Oh, and for your trouble, and I uh, get her another drink before we head out. Excellent. In total, you will have spent a nice two gold pieces on your drinks and whatnot, uh, Mr. Alrighty. Yes. Okay, so, having moved your way down to uh, the uh, Vazin estate once more, uh, you guys have began to notice the uh, oncoming of certain decorations and whatnot that certain uh, water havians have seen to hint at preparations towards um what these entail currently i'm hoping to find out right now uh just joker's corpse is one of the decorations <laughs> oh yeah definitely just like flung out dried cat hung up by the tail frayed and uh, just like pre-digested rats somewhere Loitering in its gullet. Yeah, definitely. But, um, oh, jeez. Kept that. It would have looked great on the front uh, door. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah, you could have skinned it. No. <laughs> no. I needed a winter coat. Oh, no. That's uh, a very small. It wouldn't make a large coat. <laughs> I am I'm, I'm, I think I should feel bad. I'm, I'm just starting to lose <laughs> more than Rico Mortis on my own collector. Oh, well. Uh, go ahead. So this is, is this the, uh, the Bright Swords event? The Bright Swords event? Uh, I was looking at the, the holidays you mentioned. That's very interesting. I like that. You may actually be saving me quite a bit of issues. Would you be able to tell me, uh, the date? Wait, uh, is that the one where the military comes out? Yeah. No, it's yeah, uh, they, it's uh, not that yeah. one. That is uh, back a bit in the summer. Uh, no, uh, come on, where is this? Ah, here we go, here we go. Right, uh, I can remember this. That's that kind of day. It's more or less this kind of days. Hmm. Yeah. All right. So with the coming of this oncoming month, there is um, Ag Hiren's Day, which bears a striking resemblance to. Ag, well, you know, that it's related to Ag Heron's Tower. This tower and its name holds tremendous meaning to the people of Waterdeep, as Ag Heron is essentially a outstanding wizard who more or less essentially founded Waterdeep. More or less. Um, on An Harrod's Day, which is upcoming, many small rituals are held throughout the day, dedicated to honouring the first open lord. The lords of Waterdeep toast Ag Heron and the Watchful Order, and guildmasters toast the, lo the lords in Ag Heron's name. Commoners leave violets, Ag Heron's favourite flower, around Ag Heron's tower. On, this stat on his statue in the City of the Dead, and on top the altars of the House of Wonders, bards perform songs in honour of the wizard all over the city. And the Open Lord visits taverns and inns throughout Waterdeep to wish the people well, giving short speeches, offering toasts to Ag Haran's memory, buying rounds of drinks, or paying for meals or accommodation. Needless to say, establishments of those sorts are generally full throughout the day. Mm. So upon all the other kind of preparations, especially in terms of uh, gathering some violets a little bit early before they go out of stock um, everywhere else, there is certainly, uh, every bar is certainly doing its best to refurbish its efforts in the hopes that Lady Silverhand will possibly grace them in her presence and uh, make them popular for a bit. Certainly. 
So that's some of the activity that's going on at the moment. Okay, so Melina, as as we wake up in the morning and you know we have our breakfast, and Melina realizes that this is the day that this is what's going on, she says, well, "This could possibly make our search a little bit easier. A lot of uh, civilians off the streets, well, a lot of civilians filtering into this part of Waterhaven." What a deep. What a deep. <laughs> I was thinking of the bloody name of the actual people. Um, yeah, yeah it's cool. People, people feel filtering into this side of Water Deep. That's going to leave uh, certain areas of Water Deep uh, quite. Uh, well, there's going to be quite a lot of um, guild. I mean, uh, gang activity. I'd assume they can move a bit more freely. Uh, there's a lot of presumptions around a holiday, for sure. Hmm. Well, I know this at least. I do not... Uh, I don't want to get random people involved. So... Are, are we all good to head over to the yawning portal? And... Yes, yeah, I think course. it's best okay. because uh, you're right yeah. to start get a move on at this point. I have yeah. a new yep. little uh, kobold friend in tow, certainly. All right, so yes. uh, making your way through the uh, busy streets, but no more busier than usual, you come back to the yawning portal, and there you can find that Yagara is uh, asleep at the table. Uh, snoring soundly as she waits, uh, having been here during lockup, essentially. And of course, being water deep, uh, the yawning portal never really locks up or closes. It's open all hours, of course. <laughs> so yeah, she she's I'd... there, passed out, stone drunk, cold. I just, uh, and not, not the most gently, just kind of grab her shoulder and shake her a bit. Uh, you immediately become pounced upon, and I'm going to ask you to make me an athletics check as she suddenly comes over you and grabs you by your wrist and pushes you to the table. <laughs> Melina does, while well, this is happening, Melina says, you never wake up a, a sleeping orc like that. Mm. Where? Athletics. Okay, there we go. Boop-a-dee-ba-da-bump, yeah, she still overpowers you and knocks you to the desk, uh, the table rather, mashing your face uncomfortably to one of the like uh, fallen over mugs, and uh, she basically just goes, "Oh, sorry there. Uh, let's get you up there, pretty boy." And uh, she basically just like uh, lifts you up while you've got like a bruise to your face, as she just goes, um, "Wasn't your best move, but never mind. Uh, I I shouldn't have been asleep." Anyway, I uh, dust myself off and just say, oh, and I'm the one flirting. That was certainly quite direct. <laughs> Lovely. Very nice. Very nice. Um, so, yeah, she grins at that and she just goes, so you made up your mind? Do you want to talk about it some more? Let's get you into now the we're... blabbering mouth. Yes, we should head off as soon as you can. Yeah, no time <laughs> at the present. I'm right behind you. So with that, uh, hey. she naturally uh, leads the way as uh, she takes you through uh, some of the inner workings of these places. Um, it is no su real surprise that you find yourself back at the dock ward again. Uh, oh, wow, somebody's broke a knuckle there. Um, and uh, yeah, she basically takes you back there. The, bl the drunken blabbermouth is uh, no more a particularly exciting place like any other. Um, it has a quiet m group uh, for this time um, since, uh, you know, it's still early hours so not many people are going to be drinking there. Um, but what little powers are working to make the place cleaned up are currently working to uh, tend to it all. Uh, certainly, um, just to like tidy everything up. But down in the cellar there, she takes you to a trap door, which nobody seems to be particularly watching. And uh, 
leads you down there. Or at least shows you it. She won't enter. Hmm. All right. Well, then. I, I look at her and I say, if we need you, I will let you know. Assume if, if you need if me, letting... you'll pay 1,000 gold pieces and I'll come right in with you. All right, we don't need you. I figured that would be too easy. <laughs> yeah, well, can't rent myself out for free, can I? Figured you'd kind of want to get some revenge. Oh, I guess yeah, but I'm not stupid. Person. It's not, <laughs> not going to go in there without being paid. Wow, I'm just hearing so many cracked knuckles, yeah. broken desks, slaps. <laughs> yeah. Just like always in the background. Someone's just slapping Alrighty. up some pound of bacon or something. No, One of those cracked okay. knuckles was probably me because I accidentally jammed my finger against my desk and now it's not feeling too great. Well, that's <laughs> no good. Don't do that. But uh, So, I flick her a gold piece and I'm like, another couple drinks on me. Maybe there's more coming later. Uh, Are, she's... You to... and, uh... Are you trying to get her drunk? No. I, I did that yesterday. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So you all, you all are succeeded. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, lovely. Um, she accepts it warmly and uh, carries on. Uh, okay. So, it's, so it seems that if this is the place, I certainly don't want to just go barging in. Hmm. Well, uh, you come to the trap door, and, uh, you know, it's just, uh, you man you go down it first, I suppose, and when you do go down it, you will descend into the sewers of Waterdeep, the enclosed, drank, uh, human filth that runs through the Undercity, um, just stagnantly hovering in the air, as you're making your way down into this completely dark, dimly lit place. Now, Mr. Ponk, I know you have no difficulty with dark vision. Uh, Mr. Yep. Adrian, you might have issues of dark vision, or perhaps you don't because of your warlock uh, it's, it's situation. That does not kick in until I think level 5. I'd have to double check. Ah, well, you um, I just have regular. Source. I just have regular old dark vision. Uh, well, you have Melina doesn't. Oh, no, you, so you do have dark vision, okay? And, I, I do have regular. And Braggy, you do not have dark vision, do you? Nope. So two of you need sources of light. Two of you don't, yeah. to say the least. Well, I... Uh, shit. See, I, I do have torches. I was just hoping. I um. But no, I don't. For reference, you said it. I mean, of course, it it smells really bad down here, right? It does indeed. Presta digitation does specify I can make a smell, so I'm gonna just make something a little more pleasant Certainly. around us. Yes, you uh, you transmogrify the air that enters your lungs, certainly, to make it smell however you want it to smell. Though the Lavender. contents are no different, as you are, will pick up the tiny particles of human feces, but instead you will just be getting those with more pleasant tunes. I I understand that. Um, okay, it's not yeah. worth casting the spell ninety something times to clean up all this human waste. So, oh, it's just very I'd light. Rather... You will just uh, you will just keep the air clear, so at least you can help forget about the nastiness. But you can't forget the dark vision, and you will be going around here blind yeah. until uh, two yeah. of you go mm -hmm. with light sources to yeah. navigate your way I'm... around. I light a torch. Yeah, a lot of torches. Blow. Very good. Uh, you do so. You uh, light these uh, dark under tunnels. Uh, you can see that the place has several alcoves that have long, long since been looted that otherwise indicated that these would have been burial places um, centuries back. <sighs> but no corpse, no coffin, and certainly no riches have been left behind at, at all. Um, Everything just explodes from the methane in the air. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Just all of Waterdeep explodes suddenly 
as you just create this huge erupting methane gas that just triggers everywhere. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, what will go on is uh, now those of you dark vision could not make up such a fine detail with your dark vision uh, because everything comes in like shades of uh, gray in this like contour not echo vision. I know there's like an mm -hmm. infrared kind of sight. Uh, the but, gradient problem, isn't it? Yeah, something like that. But one detail that kind of gets known as you're coming across a intersection or two is that you can see that there are some markings of a circle with ten equidistant lines protruding from it. Hmm. Oh, Paul gonna point that out. Yeah, this I think this mark is this strange. Yes, what? this is this is the mark we have been following. Oh, oh. So we're definitely on the right track. Uh, well, that depends. Do you choose to follow the markings laid out, or do you choose to ignore them and go a different way? Well, I'm saying it as in we are in the right area. But yes, yeah, she says so. Let's I guess we follow Don't these you... marks. Actually, no, no. Never mind. Nobody here ha knows thieves can't. Ah, well, that's interesting. Yeah, if uh, you did have a rogue. Oh, poor, poor tabaxi friend. <laughs> Sad. Sad. Sad sometimes. Hmm. Hmm. Sorry, I'm trying to... I... With my intelligence of... Uh... What's my intelligence? With my intelligence of 12, I would like to try and Somewhat reason out the markings. Is that possible, or? Ah, uh, yeah, uh, certainly. I mean, anybody who was at the, uh, you know, at the Zentrim warehouse when you were uncovering those dead bodies, you all remember and can match up that symbol the one of the guys had on his palm to what you're seeing here. Yeah. <sighs> no, a very similar match. And uh, certainly with that, um, you guys continue to head on in, determined to follow these markings. And when you do so, you eventually wind up here, to this location. Um, and I believe I am correct to say, and I've tried to figure this out, I've tried to, but can't really figure it out. But uh, I'm pretty sure you will wind up in the top side over here. All right, team, this is bad. There's a map. That means we're going to be in danger soon. Ooh, <laughs> it does. An enclosed map. An enclosed map, indeed. All still kind of led in here through some of the sewers and whatnot. Um, in terms of order, like walking order, what do you guys think we would be in? I I would probably be like third in the back. Yeah, and I, I'm I'm the front. I guess. Yeah, I, mean, I would be second. the I would be behind the third. Okay, so you'd be in the way back. Yeah. Which would mean Melina would be in the second behind, place. Uh, yeah. Behind yeah, Bragi. All right. Where are we Alrighty. going? Let me shove my token over there. Hmm. Oh, I accidentally did it in a black spot. That doesn't help anyone. All right, so fair enough. But yes, um, what you can see beyond is uh, you can see this walkway, and uh, you can see uh, that he carries on into a large kind of uh, open area, and uh, that area continues on. And uh, I believe it's fair to say that you're walking across what is like the river system. You're walking across the sewage, essentially. And, uh, you know, the, the flowing filth of uh, Waterdeep, for sure. Uh, and you can see that there is a little bank over this side uh, of uh, this little walkway. And this you can see that the sewers just continue down that way. Melina is just... she. Melina looks like she's in physical pain as she's 
going through this. Oh yeah, this is one foot deep sewage as you guys are slogging through it. The main sewer tunnel expands into a circular hub with a pair of arrow slits carved into outer walls. Directly across from each other, two passages continue on the north and south. A stone door is set into the back wall of a stone ledge to the west. Um, for, uh, for reference, it doesn't bother me if I'm not going through it, but if I have to directly go through it, I would be casting press the digitation to clean stuff up wherever I have to directly go through the oh yeah the poop <laughs> yeah because I am not touching that stuff yeah that makes sense all right and I'm pretty tall so I don't think I'm too far deep in the water no no you're you're very much like head is close to the ceiling at all times of this enclosed sewer line certainly. <laughs> Yeah, it don't doesn't bother me too much. Uh, but yeah, my new, you're... still my new my new shoes are ruined. Yeah, trust trust the scum of the city to literally hide amongst the scum of the city. Mm. Mm. Well, this indeed it, it, it is a place like this where you start to appreciate one of those people from the dung sweeper. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Aren't we all a part of the Dung Sweepers Guild? No, not yet. <laughs> you wish you were part of the Dung Sweepers Guild. Now, yeah. I mean, uh, let's be honest. I'm I'm pressed to up all this mess. I am beating them out. I am better than the Dung Sweepers Guild right now. Mm. I mean, that's probably what they all use anyway. <laughs> I'm sure. Uh, but we do have the matter that... Uh, you guys need to proceed, proceed and move your people. Yep. All right. Uh, uh, Elena's I... not on there. Do I see anything to my right and left? Uh, you do not. No, you do not. It's just more mm. wall of the sewers as they carry on. All right. Yeah, uh, you can click your tokens and then move them directly to the map. Uh, yeah, uh, you can do it from the character sheet, can't you? Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. indeed. Yes. Alright. Uh, I'm just going for the the rich get on up some uh, dry floor. I am going to follow along. Yes, and uh, suddenly you guys can all move along to this hub situation with uh, no difficulty whatsoever. And uh, yeah, I just need you to uh, give. Okay, so yes, yeah, Melina, you go to that uh, ledge and. Uh, you can see a doorway right beside you, just uh, standing there for sure. Mm -hmm. She's going to use perception to see if she can hear anything on the other side. Um, you can give me... I will allow you to make a perception check, certainly. Okay. Okay, perception is... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, not any proficient in it but there we that go doesn't stop you from actually trying to use your ears yeah but uh that being said is you may as well not be perception as uh no you really can't hear anything you don't hear anything of uh note and uh you continue to uh clunk your armor around as you head in through what you would otherwise believe is the quiet area mm -hmm. so the door was unlocked it is unlocked and uh you can just open it right away certainly Yep. Okay. Now, as you get to this one, again, with heavy, clunky armor, um, you are... Not really? So... Oh. Not really? I mean, unless it's, um, unless it's Braggy. Hmm? Braggy <clears throat> is, uh, well, he's not got heavy armor on. Yeah. I but... mean, cha chainmail isn't, like, it's heavy, but it's not noisy. It most definitely is noisy. At least noisy That's enough to be disadvantaged on stealth checks. Yeah. True, but I mean, I've worn train mail before. Yeah. yeah. It's not nearly as bad as plate. That's for sure. No, not at all. Not as bad as plate. But that being said, when you do uh, have these inclined, well, these tight enclosures, uh, the metal will certainly catch across some of the stone, which is... Hard to avoid, really. It's just so in tight and encumbering, really. And uh, you will find yourself uh, kind of stuck in round in here. 
And as you do so, uh, at this kind of arrow slit area right beside you, you will be suddenly assaulted by a sudden goblin who you can peer at through the other side, who snarls and lets out a small little shortbow attack point blank at you. Which is going to be a disadvantage because it is at point blank. And then mm -hmm. cancel that because it's a surprise. Which becomes a 22 doing <coughs> one point of damage after I take the free off for you. Yep. Okay. Alright. Uh, with hmm. that, you guys are now going through this place. I guess yep. we're in the right place. Are we yes, rolling initiative? Yes, I'm going to ask you to roll me initiative. Oh. Whoops, hang on. Don't roll it yet. Oh. Roll it now. Oh. Huh. Okay. Do you want me to just put in my four? I don't want to... Much better. ...feel like I'm re-rolling um, here. That's fine. Your four? Oh, that four. Yeah. I don't want the four, but I, I don't want to re-roll. Okay. ...jeopardize my, my uh, awfulness. Click the, click the token and do initiative. You got Alrighty. a cryptic token? Yep. Oh, Braggy Scrum's right, different token. There we go. Okay. And yes, Melina, through this I will say you will be able to see directly ahead of you that there is a goblin on the other side, armed with his short bow as he's coming, he's like uh, shooting at you from there. Uh, mm -hmm. He is going to roll initiative as well. There we go. Alright, awesome, yes. So, uh, that's essentially his turn. Um, and, uh, yeah, that was his surprise, really. Uh, Melina, it's your turn. Okay, so Melina puts her shield up against... She's going to step aside and put her shield against the arrow slot. Yeah, so totally. So they can't get through it. And she's going to tell the others, basically, uh, you know, get in, we're going to have to fight these guys. Get in while I'm keeping this spot, you know, protected. Yeah, mm. sure thing. Totally. And that will just be full cover. There just is no way to shoot past that full. Yeah. No, there's really not. And creatures can move through your space if you allow them, so no problem whatsoever. Yeah. Oh, nice. Okay. Adrian, it's your turn. Go, go, can I go, go. see the gob goblin at all from where I'm at? Absolutely impossible from where you are, given That's that Melina... Kind of what yeah, we're given that Melina has covered the arrow set that gave the goblin three quarters cover. And, yeah, and I can't get past one, two, I can't get past three people to try and look, really, either. And you I can. don't want to be in the front. Yeah, you, you can well, You can walk past us. Yeah. Well, I, I could, but that would put me yeah. in front where I don't know what's happening is, and then Does I'll probably die immediately. Does fifth edition still have uh, delayed act react well delayed actions? Yes, you can it absolutely does. delay a, a action, which means that you just use your action to tell me what you want to do, and uh, when the conditions are met for you to do this, it happens. Simple as that. Yes, I would. Can can I have an action with a caveat to it? Uh, let's hear it, and I'll judge. I would like to hold Firebolt if I see one enemy coming, but should two come, like, in relative closeness to each other, I'd like to do Acid Splash instead. Uh, and hold my action for that. I see. Uh, I will have one condition. I will not have two of a caveat. No, no, I will. No, I will. No, I will. No, I will. But I'm Appreciate worried... I don't have a problem. Yeah, Either though way. I'm... I'm just trying to think how it can be exploited, and I don't really think that much. You can have your caveat, sure. You prepare Firebolt, or you prepare Acid Splash. You prepare both of them at the same time, ready to... You know, you Shrojinger cat your magic spells that, while before you cast them, both are true, and yet both aren't. So you Shrojinger cast a spell, I guess. You could you could just say that you're using a cantrip Overwatch. Yeah, I, I guess so. Uh, with that, with you covering up this little slot, 
Uh, this goblin moves out of sight and uh, he goes somewhere. Uh, he's rubbery. He... <laughs> there you go. Uh, you can't see where he goes, so he definitely disappears out of sight from as far as you can tell. He doesn't shoot at your uh, shield, that much is clear. Uh, but he definitely starts uh, moving away. <laughs> Alright, All right. that's his turn. Uh, Braggy, it's your turn. <clears throat> is the door open? Yeah, it's unlocked. Not locked at all, right. it's just a stone door to be pushed aside. Open it. Done. Uh, inside, you can uh, tell that it's a particularly nasty place. Um, it's particularly not all that pleasant. Um, and uh, you can see it's just basically very lived in by uh, this uh, this little goblin, basically. Um, and, uh, yeah, well, firstly, of course, you need to be able to see what is here. Mm -hmm. boop -boop -boop. Uh, so you can see a stairway going down to the north side and also to the south you can see that uh, in this little area below it's a place filled with rusty weapons and threadbare clothing that lit the floor of this area and uh, you know, it's just a very dim and grimy sort of messy place so nothing important no alright uh, yeah, more movement yeah, uh, I'm going to use Dash. Now, first I'm going to look here, if he, he's in oh, here. Oh, yeah, he's not, don't worry. Uh, you can see the other arrow slit, and you can see that he has vacated that room. All right. Yeah, then I'm just going over here. Uh, Perfect. Uh, you can see down this uh, undercroft little area, that then it does go under, that uh, you can see Mr. Goblin running away from you as uh, he's uh, still armed with his uh, short bow. Hmm. You can see that he is entering this uh, other sleeping area with six tattered straw-stuffed mattresses. Uh, nothing of real value here. Uh, but, um, you know, yeah. you, you can see that uh, he's heading off in this direction. Yeah, but I can see that other set down here. Yeah, All indeed. Right. That's my turn. Very good. Okay, Punk, it's your turn. Okay, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. 5, 10, 15, 20. Whoops, I don't like that. 25, and that's my turn. Okay, very good. Uh, Melina, it's your turn. Yep, so she's going to move in and she's going to follow suit. One, Very two, well. three, four, five, six. Oh, wait. Six is there. Yeah, she's going to see Punk standing there, and she's like, oh, okay, I'm see what's going on there, but she's going to end her turn. Very good. Okay, Adrian Firebrand. It's Firebrand, it's your turn. Alrighty. Math. I can bonus, well not bonus action dash, regular dash all the way up here, uh, which is what I'd like to do, so that way I'm between people who can soak up arrows for me. Did you say you'd and, like to uh, bonus action dash? Yeah, I, I don't know why I said that. I am not a rogue. Correct. I am regular <laughs> action dashing. You are correct, over yes. There. And I am... Uh, is that? No, it's not a bonus action. It's a regular action. So yeah, uh, I'm just gonna... That's it. <laughs> yeah, that's totally fine. Uh, Mr. Goblin, he uh, takes a shot at you, Mr. Braggy, with a short bow, right. straight down this alleyway. Misses on a seven, and uh, continues to try and slink away, and you can hear that he uh, opens a door um, somewhere in his current position. All right. Hmm. Anything else? Uh, let me just see. Uh, well, you, you mm, I'll let you get closer first. Let you get closer first. All right. Uh, mm. Walk up here. Yes. So, firstly, you can definitely see uh this sleeping area as discussed, uh, and you can see that this little goblin has opened up a small door, <coughs> and from here. You can hear sounds of some kind of muffled activity from the room beyond. 
especially now that the, the goblin has opened this door and has kind of drawn attention to itself from whatever inhabitant was on the other side. Um, right. Uh, I'm going to throw my axe at it. Hmm. Does it have cover? Uh, one second. Right, yes, okay. Um, so, it does not have cover to stop you from shooting, throwing a hand axe at it. Alright. Then I do just that. Hmm. That was on. Uh, that is a hit, and uh, you do a good sum of damage to that little goblin, striking him hard into the <laughs> side of his frail chest as he wheezes and gasps in pain there, certainly. Yeah, and I'll do it again. Very good, roll it. Uh, without a strength, though. So, minus three. Uh, no, you get your proficiency to the attack, you just don't get it to the damage, which you mean. Yeah, yeah. that's a hit, yeah, I mean, and uh, yeah, you, you collapse that goblin down to the ground as you slaughter him. Easily. Easy. Yeah, no, excellent. Yep. Okay, that That's is your turn. turn. Ponk, it's your oh, wait, turn. No. Oh, sorry, I go wait. on. Go a little bit back. Okay. That's right. Uh, very well. Ponk, it's your turn. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Going to follow, uh, stay right there. That's my turn. Uh, very good. Uh, okay, then. With that, uh, it is now Melina's go. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, so one, two, three, four, five. She's she's gonna bring up the rear just in case anything comes from behind. Mm. So you know, let Adrian go ahead. But um, okay, yeah, yeah, good round. Okay, it's Adrian's turn again. Alrighty, um, I'm gonna move up here between them. And quick question. Would I know that goblins are kind of dexterous, or? What did you say, Sai? Uh, would I know that goblins are kind of fast and dexterous? Yeah. Or. Okay. Yeah. Uh, since since I know that, and now that I've actually seen what we're dealing with, okay. I'm not gonna hold acid splash, and I'm gonna hold firebolt. Okay. Okay. Um, you know that. Inferior to you guys mostly, but uh, yeah, Braggy, it's your turn. Hmm. Uh, I'm gonna walk over here and take a look inside. Uh, yes, you can certainly uh, look inside and uh, your angle, your angle. I guess there's a doorway there. That's more or less your angle at the moment. All right. Uh, sneak a little farther, further. Alrighty. So, uh, yes. Uh, you can see that there is, um, there's an interesting scene that's unraveling before you here. Um, so when you get a full view of this room, let's like reveal the whole area. There we go. Yeah, there huh. we go. Yeah, there are two individuals. One of them being a a dark dwarf, a Durgar, an underground, uh, underdark dwarf, rather. And you can recognize uh, this uh, individual as uh, one of the five uh, people that jumped Yurgula before in the Yawning Portal. Uh, he seemed to have managed to find his way out of that whole situation and has wound his way uh, down here. Now, what interests you is that this deep uh, dwarf is standing before a collection of furniture that's pressed up against this door. But having that goblin open the door to then collapse dead with your hand axes, the two of them have armed themselves and uh, are ready to expect your assault. Uh, but not with a, that one on initiative. Uh, but Braggy, it's still your turn, so you can come and uh, attack him if you need to. You can pick up your hand axes while you're passing this way. No, I do just that. 
I, I take off my hand axe. What should I attack, though? Hmm. Wait, no, I, t I pick up my hand axes. I'm gonna uh, walk to the back and read an action. If anyone's coming close to me, uh, to that door or to me, I throw it. Uh, now, did you not spend your action to kill that goblin? No, this is another turn. Ah, okay. It went by so fast. Okay. <laughs> uh, yes. With that, it is this guy's go. And uh, he will charge you. He will go for the door. He will trigger your reaction so you can go to roll to hit him. Yep. Ha! Ooh! Ooh! Well, I was prepared. You were. You completely bury that hand axe straight between his eyes as he just he charges forward and slumps forward as the hand axe comes squarely over his skull and he collapses with a massive thud down to the ground in front of you as he very promptly dies. <laughs> Easy. Yeah, definitely. Melina, it's your go. Oh. Yep. Okay. So, here in combat, Melina will then actually go into full-on rush. Two, three, four, five. <sighs> so, she comes in and she... Um, she sees that dead body next to uh, Braggy. Like, ah, oh, you've already taken care of it. Well, he's lined up a dead goblin over a dead human. Uh, oh, actually. Yeah. So he's got a nice pile started. All in a day's work. Yeah, I bet. Okay, so yeah, that's on her turn there. Because she, I mean, yeah, she can't really move anymore. Okay, fair enough. I guess that's her turn. Yep. All right, uh, Adrian, it's your turn. Alrighty, I am gonna move actually in front of him, um, and uh, I'm going to yell, "Don't move!" I'm gonna ready witch bolt for if he moves or if he takes any aggressive looking actions. Uh, you could just shoot him now, you know, or. You I I could, but I have I have no clue what's going on, and I haven't seen him do anything to hurt us or there any of are. that. Yeah. So, I I don't want to just random. It, from a meta game sense, I know he's probably bad, but from a end game sense, I have no clue, and I don't want to just randomly murder some guy. Ah, oh, that's fair. That's fair. Um, and I don't want to be so dull and boring, but uh, huh. He uh, comes right up for you guys, certainly, uh, but not just uh, not just absolutely typically. Um, -ba -ba yeah. So the first thing he does is when he sees you guys, he um, he just sees you and he suddenly just vanishes <laughs> out of sight. And that would not trigger my witch bolt because I wouldn't be seeing that as an aggressive action. Okay. Yeah. And he's you are like oh. that's what you see. He just lurks out of view, certainly. And uh, yeah, no. How do you guys respond? Uh, beginning on Pong's turn, I guess. Well, Pong doesn't see anything happen, but five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five. He can't go in there, so he's going to stay right there and see what happens. Um, it may also interest you that uh, this doorway that otherwise was enclosed uh, with furniture has now begun to shift forward. It's furniture and door beginning to jolt forward with sudden sort of uh, shifting movements as uh, it seems to be opening up. Hmm. Okay. Hopefully it's not a monster in there. Hmm. Braggy, it's your turn. Hopefully uh, the, it's our buddy. Is the door already open or is it opening? It's opening. Alright. I rush over and slam the door shut. Okay. Uh firstly, um I'm gonna need you to make a contesting athletics check, please. Alright, I can do that. Ah, not good. 
Uh, you seem to be able to uh, slam the door shut and keep everything in place. Uh, now, I want you to make me a perception check, please. Yep. Step. There. Not too good, brother. <laughs> Um, yeah, you're unsure what you're sensing or what you're picking up, but something feels a bit off here. Mm -hmm. Um, anyway, mm. yeah, yeah, anyway, uh, there we go. Uh, with that, I guess it is, uh, Melina's turn again. Okay. So I'm going to walk into here, sees him holding that door shut, and she will at least uh, call out, uh, we've already made noise anyway, so she's going to say, um, is there anyone in there? Uh, in the door. Uh, no. you, you receive no verbal response, but from the corners of this doorway, there have not been uh, filled with cloth of some kind. You can see that there is a grey sort of material bubbling forth from its corners. Oh, shit. Okay. Um, is there any sort of identification I can do on that? No, not really. Not from... Uh... Yeah. Do you have the Arcana skill? No. <laughs> then no, not really. Especially since... Uh, thingy is in the way. Yeah. Um, I have Arcana. Would I see this too? Yeah. Uh, no, you from would not. At? No, not from where you're Fair at. Enough. There's too much going on. Uh, and you are a human lacking. Well, no, you do have the dark vision. You just I'm doubted half yourself. Elf. Yeah, you, yeah. So <clears throat> even then, you still don't have uh, exceptional uh, sight going on at the moment. Understood. Um, yeah. Uh, with that, this, um, I'll put it over here. This grey ooze begins to form out from within the other side of this door. And I'll show it what? to you that it is this grey ooze that sort of slivers out from the dark cobblestones between here. Ew. Yeah, it is a bit gross and it is, uh, very, well, it is making its way out there. Now, it gives an attack. To me? Well, yeah. Broggy, that's interesting because if it was after you, it was kind of after your legs. But it oh. missed terribly and uh, didn't seem to strike anything as its pseudopods uh, of ooze just very faintly tried to wiggle its way forward towards you. Uh, Adrian, it's your turn. Now, I will say okay, this news I... has full cover given uh, Braggy's positioning. That's plus what AC? All of plus it. Plus like four? Yeah, it, it is unshootable with full cover. Alright. Um, if it's unshootable, mm -hmm. then that puts me in a predicament. It does. I... I'm going to just <laughs> just ready in action again for if he gets out of the way or that thing gets in a position where I can actually take a shot at it, I'm going to lose the fireball. Uh, certainly, certainly. Uh, now, this is where things get interesting, uh, br Braggy. Yeah. You suddenly and immediately feel something brush up against your legs. And it is a bulky thing that brushes up against your legs. And it suddenly, like, passes towards leaving your area, heading down in this direction. You can make that much out. And you can... But with that immediately declared, you may make an attack action at disadvantage because essentially you are blinded. All right. In the case of a invisible target. Okay, yes, that is going to be a miss as your totem of a ram just falls against empty air. And uh, oh, yeah. you can see right here that this doorway 
uh, opens up as uh, whatever was scurrying by, maybe your invisible friend, um, basically just uh, carries on in that direction. Yeah, most surely. Uh, should I chase it? Hmm. Well, you have the great ooze that's uh, currently on your tail if you were to chase after him. Yeah, then I need to disengage. Uh, fuck it. Uh, I'm just gonna. Can I attack the ooze? Uh, well, that will have to be on your turn, which is now. Yeah. So I can. Yes. Yes. Slam it with. No. Fuck it. I'm. I'm going for. I'm going for the dwarf. Okay. Very well. Uh, disengage. All right. And... Excellent. Wait, how far? Oh. Uh, when you see down this corridor, uh, you can see all the way to a set of stairs, and the detail's <laughs> a bit vague beyond there, but you don't see your dwarf friend. Uh, just peek over now with the stairs. All right. Uh, make me a dexterity saving throw. Uh, all right. Ooh, the pair of you trip over one another as you both fall prone side by side um, uh, like against these stairs. You're trying to ascend them and in so doing you uh, trip over as you definitely spilt over him and uh, you imagine that the pair of you sort of tumble after one another. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. yeah I, I guess that's my turn. Right. Uh... And finally, Ponk, what will you do this round? Uh, 5, 10, 15, 20. Uh, I assume that the ready action, I can just use uh, take an action to ready an action. Is it correct? I didn't understand what you said. You took an action to ready an action? Uh, I'm, if I'm, I'm thinking about ready an action. No, it can't. I'm no, sorry can't. to interrupt, but since Broggy moved out of the way, um, that would trigger my ready to action, correct? It would indeed. Because now I have line of sight on it. You do indeed. Right. Thank you for interrupting it. That is actually a good time. Uh, and this would be just regular, right? Not disadvantage or anything? Correct. Okay. And that is there a hit. Go. And it does some fire damage. Some very nice fire damage. Now, the fires only ever so gently roast this ooze, less than how the potency looked when you shot it against its being. Hmm. Got it. Okay. Alrighty. Uh, Ponk, please, uh, you may have your turn. Okay, I think that is my 20. 25, and i just gonna throw a dart at it. Okay, very well. Throw a dart. That is a hit, certainly. Uh, Wait, I didn't put the damage on it? I already put the damage on it. You click the dart and it will do the damage, as you should be able to see from the roll I just made. There you go. Excellent. Lovely work. Yes, so... Um, any made of metal that hits the use... I did not mean... That. So, yeah... Uh, when this dagger comes striking at this ooze, um, it certainly wobbles about, having taken that damage. But also, the dagger is dissolved and eaten up into part of its being as it melts away, becoming unretrievable. Okay. Well, that's unpleasant. And with that situation, we will end this session here today. <laughs>